Hi, I'm Trisha Ray, and this is Colossal TV. Uh, if you're familiar with Colossal Magazine, we, which is this one here, we're going to be bringing some of this great content to you live on this show tonight. And this is my co-host, Annie Blanchford. Hi, so Trisha and I are hanging out in Wolf Lane Bar in the city at the moment. Um, tonight, we're going to be bringing to you for our episode one, um, behind the scenes footage of the fashion shoot from issue eight pretty cool. It, it, yes it is and we've also got a live interview with a band called Tired Lions and they've also interviewed a really cool graph artist Art or Motion. And we've also got some footage of what I hear you were doing on the streets just out there, just uh, casually stealing some people's food and drinks. I was casually, I, I wasn't necessarily stealing, I was borrowing because I actually gave it back. Stealing is when you don't give it back. Okay. I actually would just go up and take a drink from somebody and actually I just wanted to see their reactions and some people are actually really friendly and really generous and actually sometimes wanted to give me their food That's after I'd drink and, or eaten some of what they already had yeah. and others just actually literally ran away from me. So let's go take a check of how it went. had the opportunity to interview them at the Hen House studio, so let's go check it out. Judges like Ella Hooper from Killing Heidi, 
um, the dude that manages like Allies and um, Stonefield and um, yeah, I guess they just liked our sound and said, hey. So is that the first festival you guys yeah. ever sort of done? Was it, was it like a really big, um, like a really big area that you had or was it more of a different kind of show? No, it was a, it was a big stage so it was across um, from like the Triple J stage, I think, I don't know. It was cool because we were playing quite early so none of the bigger bands were on yet. Well, um, as a little roundup sort of question, because you guys are playing for Lights Out Arts Festival for Colossal, which we're all very excited about, um, what would you guys say to someone who's never heard you guys, never seen you, what would you say to convince them to come see you play? The bacon's on the Simba. <coughs> They're rad. I heard that you guys are awesome. What about you? <laughs> Mine's the bacons on the Simba. I don't know, just like if you like Nicki Minaj, oh, if you like Skrillex, <laughs> then just come down because we're a bit like that. Skrillex. <laughs> no, we're awesome. definitely not like that. I think definitely would stop talking to you guys as well. Cool. Um, thanks so much for talking to us. Um, thanks, Baby. Thank you, and um, we're looking forward to seeing you guys soon. Lights up. Thanks guys. Bye. Cheers. We're going to take a look at Colossal Magazine issue 8 behind the scenes fashion shoot featuring Ricarda, Transit, Jack Clothing and Dillian Rose. My name is Isabel. I am the fashion editor for Colossal Magazine. Um, today we're doing a photo shoot. It's the concept is Color My Life. Um, basically, it's like a budding romance between two artists in their studio space. There's going to be heaps and heaps of color, and we're super excited about it. Today, in terms of clothes, we're really playing with the idea of neons and pastels and kind of mixing them together. In terms of hair and makeup, basically what we're doing is we're playing with the idea of colour again. We've got like a lot of um, colour in the hair, so it's like pink on the ends, we've got like blue for the guy, and then with makeup we're also um, doing kind of like a blue fallout over the eyebrows, giving it like a quite edgy look, um, but also adding in colour so it still has that pop in front of the camera. episode we wanted to talk about sharks and specifically about the recent kill order. So we hit the streets of Perth to hear what you had to say about it. Okay so Alex we just want to know, now I know you're from Lancaster yeah. yep, in <laughs> England and you've flown all the way over to Australia and we want to know if you know very much about shark attacks here. No, I've not heard a lot about them, but when I've been, la when I've been laying on the beach, I've heard the helicopter go over. Okay, how did that make you feel? I don't know, 
makes me, I don't really want to get in the sea very much. But I did see some dolphins the other day. Oh, well, that's a bit nicer. Did you guys know about oh, that? No, I didn't know about it. Yeah, it's like, do you know much about the shark attack that happened in Hong Kong yeah. a few days ago? Yeah, yeah. What did you think about that? Oh, I think it's fair enough, though, sure. Yeah, they killed some other guys. So, yeah. oh, yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, so if it was your friend that was in by shark, you definitely want the shark to yeah. be yeah, killed? Definitely. Yeah, Yeah. And be like, what would you do, like, if that was your friend, would you? Would you want that shark shot because there's about 20 rounds of ammunition that yeah. were you know, put into that for shark. It. Yeah. You pay for the shark yeah. to be shot? Yeah. yeah. Um, no, I wouldn't want that shark shot because I suppose if we're swimming in their sea, they're going to attack us. And like by shooting that shot, it's not going to put other sharks off coming over here. Yeah, that's true. So in so we I did a bit of research to see like we had about five shark attacks in 2012 just in WA. So when you're thinking about our population, that's probably not so many. If you're going to compare it to maybe car accidents yeah. or something like that, yeah. Yeah, no, that's definitely it's not really that much of a problem, is it? Yeah, yeah and there's right. definitely I don't think there's any need to shoot the shark. Because really, it's their ocean, isn't it? Yeah, it's their ocean, and we're in their territory. Yeah, cool. We okay. should just stay on land. We, well, maybe we should be doing that. <laughs> yeah, that sounds really good. So you're not going to be coming over in a boat from England? No, <laughs> definitely not. Okay, thanks so much, Alex. Thanks Thank for talking you. to us. So we've got Courtney Rawlings on the show with us today. Now, Courtney, you're an assistant editor for Awesome Magazine Social Issues. Now, you recently covered the Gates Kill Order. Yeah, it was a protest uh, against the state government um, issued kill order against sharks. Basically, these two young guys, musicians, they're surf enthusiasts, um, just felt really passionately that you know, they really didn't want these sharks to be killed in spite of all these you know, federal attacks that kind of have been happening. So they organised this event to just really raise awareness of it and hopefully you know, through media coverage of it, kind of get it in the heads of the government at the moment um, and other political parties that the feeling out there is that you know, people don't want around. There was there many people down there supporting that? There protest? were. There are about 100, 100, 150 kind of surfers in the water. It is a good turnout. Um, you know, 50 spectators. The most impressive part was though that they marked the whole thing on Facebook. And on Facebook they had nearly 1,500 people kind of clicking onto it either saying that they'll be there or you know, showing their support. So I think the numbers alone on social media kind of indicate that um, you know, that, that's a general feeling out there, and it was quite a, you know, kind of cross section of people. So it was, you know, youth, it was older people. Okay. You know, people, you know, most Perth people have grown up on the water their whole lives. Yeah, that's so, right. Yeah. Right. So I'm just wondering, like, so was there anything kind of sparked that they just decided that this is what they wanted to do just to show? Yeah, the kill order was given by the state government to the Department of Fisheries. It was, um, it was issued earlier this year, late last year, there was discussion about it. Basically, it just states that any shark that's deemed an imminent threat to beachgoers uh, can, be, can be killed. And who makes that call? The call is made by the head of the Department of Fisheries. He currently is uh, Stuart Smith. Okay. Um, him or the uh, an appropriate minister, should he not be available. Yeah. So and when are they saying kind of this shark should be shot? Or what are the criteria? The imminent threat, they kind of go through a bit of a checklist. Um, the only time it's actually been ordered so far has been when it was down in Dunsborough. So you're dealing with pretty much non-controlled beaches. Um, if the shark was spotted about three or four times in the same vicinity and they just thought, I, I guess their way of thinking about it is that this is something's going to happen. Your shark's hanging yeah. around, people are in the water, we need to kind of get rid of it. So it's more of a preventative measure, but even so, you know, they're claiming that people are going to be safe from it. Cool, it's a pretty big feeling that people don't want well, What do you think? I personally think when it comes in so close to shore and it's a reoccurring thing, yeah. That the kill order is appropriate. Well, if you know it's the same shark, I mean, it's got a tag on you, and that's the same shark that's just coming five yeah, times. Yeah, yeah. If it's a different shark every single time, which is not very often and that's anyway. Not, that's again, part when, of you, the when you're talking about WA, I mean, you probably had how many shark attacks last year? It was the five fa five yeah, So there you go. So you got yeah. five attacks, and how many people were in the water? So I don't really think that that makes it shooting a shark. Yeah. At least just having it there, having this kill order as a backup. I mean, we've got to do something. We can't just sit back and let 
there's people young get killed, people yeah. dying and their brothers and sons. You're talking about five, five fatal attacks. Yeah, so, and that's a pretty significant. And I'm per- personally, I'm of the opinion that if you save one human life, if you have to kill a yeah. giant fish, like to me, the human life is more valuable. It's a human life. <laughs> what do you think about the people that are out there diving and surfing, and they know the risk that they're putting themselves in? That's a good point. They they do know the risk, and they're there because they love the ocean. Um, personally, when I was about five years old, my uh, my parents' best friend, who's an abalone diver, he got taken off Gracetown. So I guess ever since I was little, it's been kind of this thing about sharks. But um, you know, he he knew the risk. And you made the point before: it's not a cull order. We're not out. No, and that's what I noticed at the, the, pro- at, the, at the peaceful paddle out protest was that a lot of people were throwing that word around, which is just it's just not accurately describing the kill order, and I think that's a very important distinction. To make. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thanks so much. Thanks, thanks for being here. Yeah. Thank you. We also got a call to chase up a graph artist to paint a caravan and so we went on the search for someone and who did we find? We found Chris, better known as Idle Motion and we've got an interview with him to check out now. I have to go home and draw just to forget about it. Down it. Really frustrating. So. Or I'm not happy. I'm not happy. With it. I'm not enjoying myself. I'm not enjoying myself. I don't want to do it. Chris, um, I'm from Idle Motions. moved back to Western Australia uh, in about 96, it wasn't until about 97 that I started getting out about and seeing all the graffiti murals around and um, it just it just looks so bright and colourful. The whole the concept of having art outdoors really caught me by surprise um, at the start initially and then after that it was just the bright colours and the manipulation of the lettering really, um, really attracted me towards it because um, I had never seen anything like it beforehand, obviously. From there on, that was it. It was a snowball effect. It just kept getting bigger and bigger. Yeah, it was good fun. Um, I don't like to just stick to one thing. I'm a big fan of painting animals and insects for some weird reason. I don't know. But um, yeah, I seem to have a lot of fun doing that. So yeah, check that out. You'll see some cool stuff. Hopefully uh, you can become a fan and follow me along on the journey. watching our first episode of Colossal TV and we hope you enjoyed it. We're going to leave you with some tired line now so thanks for watching. See you later.